what are the types of urinary incontinence? We have five types of urinary incontinence, that is the stress incontinence, ad incontinence, functional incontinence, overflow incontinence, and other mixed types of incontinence. To start with, let's have a look at the stress incontinence. Stress incontinence is the most common form of urinary incontinence and is known to occur most commonly in females. Stress incontinence is treatable. So this occurs when there is any issue or a thing that causes an increase in the intra-abdominal pressures, for example, coughing, laughing, sneezing, or any other movements that put a lot of pressure on the bladder. This causes an involuntary leakage of urine. Stress incontinence can also be associated with other physical changes that result from either pregnancy, delivery, or menopause. Usually, the pelvic floor muscles that support the bladder, if they weaken, the bladder moves downwards, pushing slightly to the bottom of the pelvis towards the vagina in females. Then, this stress incontinence occurs if these muscles that do the squeezing weaken. Stress incontinence is known to worsen during the week before menstrual periods because of a lowered estrogen levels that lead to a lower muscle pressures around the urethral sphincters, therefore increasing the chances of urinary leakage. And this incidence increases with menopause in females. The second type of urinary incontinence is an urge incontinence. An urge incontinence is generated from an overactive or an abnormal involuntary bladder muscle contraction. This contraction results to a urinary leakage in presence of a normally functioning urethral sphincter. A detrusor instability is usually an idiopathic problem. In these patients with detrusor instability, a sensation of urgency occurs first, then it is followed by the initiation of an involuntary bladder control, then finally a urethral relaxation. There are two possible mechanisms for this, one of which is a relative cholinergic denervation of the detrusor or the bladder muscles, and the second mechanism is either the effects of aging on the smooth muscles and the autonomic nervous system. A detrusor hyperreflection, on the other hand, is a condition of an, an inhibited detrusor contraction in the presence of a neurologic relation or a problem in the suprasacrospinal cord or the central nervous system, for example, spinal cord injury, Parkinson's disease, dementias, and in neoplasias or cancers. So, a spinal cord injuries interrupt the sacral reflex arc from the suprasacrospinal cord, cerebral cortex, and the higher centers. So, these pathways are normally crucial for the voluntary and involuntary inhibition of urination. In the initial phase, of the spinal cord injury, the bladder is usually a reflexic and the overflow incontinence occurs. But later on, a detrusor hyperreflexure will occur. This detrusor hyperreflexure may be triggered by a specific event, for example, coughing, a changes in posture, or a changes in the speed of bladder filling, orgasm, or an anticipation to voiding. The third type of urinary incontinence is a functional incontinence. People who have a functional incontinence are the ones who have problems either in thinking, moving, or communicating, which prevent them from either reaching the toilet. For example, in a person with Alzheimer's disease, for example, he or she may not think well to plan a timely trip to the restroom to urinate. So a person on a wheelchair, on the other hand, may be blocked from getting to a toilet in time. Most of these conditions are associated with age and account for some incontinences of most elderly women in nursing homes. Overflow incontinence. In overflow incontinence, the blood is always full so that it frequently leaks out urine. So a weak bladder muscles or a broken urethra can cause this type of incontinence. And then sometimes nerve damage as a result of diabetes mellitus or other diseases may weaken these bladder muscles or tumors and other urinary stones may block the urethras and overflow incontinence are a rare type of incontinence in women. 